All right, so let's continue with this matrix stuff. Uh, I think this is the last thing in this chapter about matrices, okay? Um, there may be another chapter where it gets a little bit more involved. I'm not really sure. Again, it's my first year teaching out of this book, and I can't remember because I have scanned through it, but I just don't remember if we do matrices again. It seems like we should. It seems like there's a little more to what we've been doing, but, you know, we'll get there if we get there. All right, let's do this. Here's a word, and it's called right here. Determinant, all right? What is the determinant? Did you do this in Algebra 2? Does that ring a bell? Yeah. Multiplicative inverses, okay. Big fancy word for basically saying division, really. It's kind of what that means. Anyway, let's just do this. Um, let's just talk about a determinant. So sometimes I'm not going to like show you, I will show you how to do it. Um, but right now, I'm just going to show you the, the, like the symbol for it, the, I don't know, what, there's a better word for it. I don't know, the symbol for it, the notation, okay, how you write a determinant. So, they're going to ask you, find the determinant of a matrix. So, the determinant, determinant of matrix, all right. So this is a matrix. We always do that little bracket thing for a matrix, right? You've done a bunch of that stuff already. And we're just going to put some random numbers in here. Seven, six. So when they ask you, and we'll, I'm going to show you in a, in a minute. Okay, it won't be too long. I'll show you how to do this. But there's a symbol for the determinant. So instead of writing all this out, instead of saying, find the determinant of this matrix, they have, a, they have a way to show that, okay? And in order to find the determinant of a matrix, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some manipulation of some of the numbers inside of the uh, determinant, um, would look like this. So the determinant is just straight up and down lines, almost like looks like absolute value. It doesn't mean the same thing as absolute value, but it kind of looks like it. So we're just gonna put those same things, those same elements inside of that so they could just do this they could just say find and then give you that does that make sense now you don't know how to find it just yet all right but that's what it means all right so if you instead of writing all that out find the determinant of this matrix they would just do this okay put the bars on the ends and that means to find the determinant does that make sense all right so uh, they do a thing with the a1 a2 b1 b2 and all that and I do have it in my notes, uh, but I think I'm just going to start with an example. I think that's the easiest way to do it. All right. So, yeah, I actually use those numbers right there. So let's do it. So what we do is just like a two-step thing. Uh, I guess you could consider it three steps, but that's okay. So here we go. Watch. What we're going to do is we're going to take that top left one and the bottom right one, and we're going to multiply them together. All right. And so what do you get? Let's show it, okay? So it's gonna be what? Eight times six. That way you can look back on it and you're like, oh, how'd you get that number? Well, it's right there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply these two numbers together, okay? So you start with the top left one, right? And you go to the one that's across from it, it's opposite it, okay? And then you do the other two. And you multiply those together, 4 times 7. And then what you're going to do is you're going to subtract those two products. That's how you find the determinant. All right? So you multiply kind of like cross multiplication, I guess, if you want to think of it that way. I don't think they really refer to it that way. But if that makes sense, that's fine. So you kind of cross multiply. But what do you do after you multiply those two things together? You subtract them and then you're good to go. And that is the determinant. So what's that? 48 minus what's that? 28, which is 20. So the determinant is just the number 20. Okay? So when they say find the determinant, that's what they ask you to do. Now look, I gotta be honest with you. I don't have any like real world situations off the top of my head. I know there are. I took a whole class trying to, th it's, they called it linear algebra. It sounds easy enough, right? Linear, just straight lines, you know, seems easy enough. 
the whole entire course in college, a whole entire semester, basically on matrices. And that's what linear algebra was. Um, and of course, that was like 40 some years ago <laughs> that I took that class. And um, Senior night tonight. Also, students that come out tonight will get a free dress Sunday. Thanks to Mr. Tech. Let's go, Lions! Senior night is at 4:45, and the game starts at 5:15. All right, here we go. Here's another word. Ready? You're not always going to have two by two determinants or uh, matrices. Sorry. Okay, you're not always going to have this. Okay, but when you have a situation like this, this is how you find the determinant. You can have a bigger um, matrix, uh, maybe a three by three. So how would you do that? You wouldn't just multiply like all three of them together. It'd be kind of complicated. So I'm going to show you what we do. So find the minor of a determinant. Now, this is just part of what we have to do to find the actual determinant. So I think I will use the letters in this situation. I'm not going to use the numbers. I didn't spell that right, did I? Determ oops, wrong thing. Term in A and T. There we go. Determinant. Did I spell it right? I think I did. All right. So here's what we do. Okay, these bars mean you're going to find the determinant, and I'm going to go A, B, C. So this is going to be a three by three. And this is what we usually do, we say that's the first row, second row, third row, and do the same thing with this. One, two, three, and then one, two, three. Again, to find the minor of the determinant, just basically um, it gets, it makes it into a two by two determinant, okay? And we're gonna have to do, it's gonna be several steps, okay? If you have a three by three, it's a lot more steps to do this than it would be a, um, just the determinant of a two by two matrix. Okay, so here's how we do this. Let's go to a different color. What we're gonna do, so we take that first row and we're gonna mark it out, okay? We're gonna get rid of it for now. It's not gonna completely go away, but for now. And then we're gonna take the first column and mark it out, okay? And look what we have left. See what we have left? Yeah, we got a two by two, and that would be considered the minor of this determinant, all right? There's several minors, okay? I'm gonna show you in a little bit, all right? So this is one of them. So let's go back to white. And so the minor, and they do this, they call it, see how we started here at A1? We went across and down. So they say the minor of A1 is We'll keep it a determinant again. So what's left over if we get rid of the red stuff? Yep, exactly. B2 and C2 and B3 and C3. Again, that's just one small step of what we're going to do. It's a, I shouldn't say small step. It's a major step. But it's, um, it is one of the steps that we're going to do to find the determinant of a 3 by 3. And you're going to see it's a lot more involved doing a three by three than it is a two by two, but two by twos we can do. So what if I needed to find the determinant of this? What do I do? B2 times C3 minus what? C2 times B3, good. Everybody with me on that? Okay, so that's kind of where we're going with this. Let's keep going. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna try to keep that there, see if I have enough room. This is called a third order determinant. I didn't say that on the other one. The other one was a two by two, so it's called a second order determinant. This is a three by three, so they call it a third order determinant. And um, this is how we find it. This is actually how we find it. Again, this is just a part, one part of finding this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the uh, minor of A1. I just wanna make sure I do this. It's been a I took these notes last week, so I haven't looked at it since. So I just want to make sure I do that correctly. Yes. We're going to find the minor of A1, of B1, and C1. And then we're going to do some multiplication of a scalar. We're going to do some addition and subtraction. You'll see what I'm talking about. So here we go. This, this is what we're going to do. 
So if I was to find the determinant, so if they say find, and they don't have to say the word determinant, how do you know you're finding the determinant? Because you have those straight lines right there, okay? So if I ask you to find this, obviously you're gonna put regular numbers in there, right? They're not gonna put A, B, C and all that stuff. They'll put regular numbers in there. But this is what we would do in general. So first thing we do is we go A1, since that's our first minor, the A1 minor, we're gonna take that and we're gonna multiply it by the A1 minor. What was the A1 minor? B2, C2, B3, C3, okay? So it's whatever's left over, all right? So I'm gonna do the A1, so it's gonna be A1 times, and then whatever's left over here. So what is left over? B2, C2, B3, C3, okay? Now, the first one, we're gonna do three of them, right? Because we're gonna find the minor of A1, B1, and C1. We're gonna do three of them. The first one is always positive, okay? Even if that's a negative number, okay, we just keep it a negative number. We don't change it, all right? So whatever A1 is, we put it right here. If it's a three, we just put a three. If it's a negative three, we just put a negative three. You with me on that? We don't just change it to positive. So whatever the number is of A1, we just keep it the same. That's what the positive means. But then the second one, guess what we're gonna do on the second one? We're gonna subtract, all right? And what are we gonna subtract? We're gonna subtract, what do you think? the B1. Now, how do I figure out what's gonna be in here? Well, I take this and I get rid of that column. Just double check and making sure I'm doing it right, I am, okay. Okay, everybody see that? All right, so on the B, we still take out that first row, but now you're gonna take out the second column. And then what's left over? Oops, let's go keep it color coordinated here. Um, yeah, A2, C2, and then A3, and then C3. You kind of get the idea, don't you? This one's positive. This one's the opposite sign. I shouldn't say it's positive. This one stays the same sign. This one changes the sign. And this one does, what do you think? Yeah, it's going to be, why is it not writing? What happened? Oh, everything was going so well. See, it's not writing. Oh, there, nope. I don't know why it does that. I didn't do anything. It just like, well, my internet went down. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. There we go. I don't know. You just got to complain about it, then it works. I don't know. <laughs> Plus what? What do you think's next? C1. C1. All right. You getting the idea? Yeah, just, just move it over. Okay, wow. so we get rid of that. And then, now what's left over? A2, B2, A2, B2 A3, B3, right. All right, so. That's it. I mean, this stuff's brand new. I don't know if you did this in Algebra 2 or not. I think some people in Algebra 2 probably. Okay. I mean, I don't expect you to... Now, look, when I say you should have learned this in Algebra 2, I don't expect you to walk in here and say, oh, yeah, I can do that, all right? But when I say that, I just mean, does it seem a little bit familiar to you? You know? Okay. That's all right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm just curious to see if you learned it or not, okay? All right. Okay? So, look, the signs alternate, don't they? They start off. Now, again, I'm going to say this again. When I put a plus here, that doesn't mean if A1 in your original problem is a negative number, we don't change it to positive. We just keep it whatever it was. This means what? We change whatever that was. So if B1 was a negative, we change it to what? A positive. If it was a positive, we change it to a negative. All right? It just means the opposite of whatever B1 was. And then this, again, just stays the same. So that's what you're doing. So again, you kind of get into a rhythm, just like when we did the multiplication. So how do I find, how do I find the determinant of a three by three? Well, I mark off the first row, and then I mark off the first column, whatever's left over, boom. It's the first row, it was A1, so we put an A1 here. Then we go to B1, we put a B1 here, but we take the opposite sign. Put a, mark off that column, what's left over? This one, this one, this one, this one, okay? Then you move that over again. 
I mean, you don't have to actually put the lines there, but you can ment mentally do it. Or if you wanted, you could. I don't know. Maybe put like a little arrow there or something just to indicate which ones you're getting rid of, just so you remember. However, you want to do that, and that's that's what we do. Okay, you just got to get used to it. All right, you just have to do them a few, do a few of these, and then you'll kind of get used to it. So let's do a real one. You want to put some real numbers in here now? You got that written down, right? Yeah. Okay. So, well, we will once we get some numbers in there. But that thing right there didn't have any real numbers in there, so you couldn't really do anything with it. Just kind of showed you the process. There we go again. Why? Why? I should have. There we go. Oh, no. Come on. There. Okay, now it seems to be working. Example two. All right. It says find. And they say find the value of, or just I'm just going to put find, all right? So it's a three by three matrix. Here we go. Putting real numbers in this time. Put five, negative one, three. You guys writing this down? I see some people not writing. All right. I'm going to put it down here so I have some room. All right, what do we do first? I'll put the I'll put arrows like this, okay? Cross off the top row. Yep, so we cross off the top row, cross off the first column, but what do we put first? Our A1. So what's our A1? Uh, negative 4. Right. Do we change the sign of it? No, no we keep it. Even though it's a negative, you know, like Mr. Hamrick, you said the first one was positive. <laughs> Not really. I didn't say that, did I? You said the first one is you just keep the sign the same, all right? And then you're going to make a little two by two matrix. So you cross off the top or the first row, cross off the first column. What's left then? One, right. Three, four, so it's negative one, three, four, negative three. Good. Now the second one, it's this one right here. Okay. And again, we still knock this out. All right. And so you're going to put what? Negative six? Minus negative six. Right, minus negative six, which is going to give you what? Plus six. Right, so let's just put the plus six. You okay with that? If you don't remember why that's a plus six, put minus negative six then. That's fine. All right? And now I got rid of the second row, or the second column, sorry, and the first row. What do I have left? Five, three. three. You got it. Now you're getting the hang of it. See, it's not too bad after you do one, right? It is. So what's the next one? Plus, right, and then it's this one right here. So we get rid of that, but we put that number down. If I get rid of the third column, what am I left with? So first row is crossed out, third column is crossed out. Five, negative one, good. Five, negative one, negative two, and four. So now we're basically just have a lot of tedious arithmetic, all right? This one stays the same, okay? See, that was a negative four, so that stays the same. This one, the second one, you change the sign of it. It was negative six, so we make it a positive six, okay? This one stays the same sign. That was positive two, it stays positive two. Only the middle one changes. Only the middle one changes, right, okay? Then you keep it negative. No, if the third one, if that was a negative two, you'd keep it minus two, all right? Because you just keep it whatever the sign was. This, this right here is minus. This one's minus a negative six. Okay, everybody see that? That's how I got positive six. If this was a regular six, this would be minus six. Right, okay? So you keep the signs the same, except for the middle one, you just change the sign of whatever it is. That's all you gotta remember. It's just the middle one you change the sign. Make sense? All right, so let's do these now. Again, a little tedious, just a bunch of arithmetic. I don't know how much we want to do in our head. Do we want to do a lot in our head? Let's do. We're not going to do everything in our head. We'll do a little bit in our head. All right, so let's do that. Multiply those together. What do I get? Three, and then minus, right? This. So when I do the determinant, I always subtract. So I multiply these together, it's positive 3, then I subtract that, which is what? 12. 12. 
Everybody got that? So you can do that much in your head. Plus 6, and then let's do it again. Multiply those together. It's negative 15 minus what? Negative 6, which makes it plus 6. If you want to put the minus minus there, feel free. I just made a plus. Plus 2, and then multiply 20 minus 2. Did I get all the numbers right? Let me check my notes. Yep. Wait, that be, so yeah. Oh, I, I, I messed up. That sh I just forgot it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just forgot it. Sorry. That's how I was double checking. And I even double checked and I didn't even see it until you mentioned it. All right. We good with that? All right. Let's do this. So we'll write the stuff in the parentheses out. 3 minus 12 negative 9, plus 6 times negative 15 plus 6, that's also negative 9, plus 2 times what, 18, yeah? And this is what, 36 minus 54, what's that? 20 minus 2. No. Yeah, but, but we're subtracting. Remember, after you multiply the, when you multiply these, you subtract the product, all right? So this is a positive two, but you're subtracting, so it's 20 minus two. Yeah, I did get that right. And this is minus, what, 54? And then that's what, plus 36? Yep. Am I right? Yeah. So uh, however you want to do it, I think that's negative 18. This is how I did it. That's negative 18 plus 36, and that is positive 18. So there you go. You just found your first determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. Yeah, it, it really isn't difficult. You just got to know the method, right? You got to know what to do, what to multiply, what to subtract. But really, once you get all those numbers in the right place, again, like I said, it's just tedious arithmetic. It's all it is. But there's a lot of places in there you can make mistakes, isn't there? So you got to be careful. Take it slow. Don't try to go too fast. All right? We okay with that? All right. That's the only example they give for that. Okay? There's really no reason to give another example. Um, that's good enough. All right. So make sure you practice that and get used to that whole thing. All right. Um, no, we got to do that inverse, that multiplicative inverse thingy. All right, just uh, just wait for this. You're gonna love this one. Um, do you remember, like even in algebra one and geometry, we talked about an identity property. Identity. If you do an identity, like in in um, shh, listen, in. In addition, the identity property basically said that 1 plus 0 equals what? 1. Okay, it's identity. So what, what do you do to a number, any number, to keep it the same? You just add a 0 to it, correct? All right. There's also uh, a multiplicative identity. All right. So what if I had a 3? What, could, what would I multiply this by in order to keep it the same number? Right. Okay, so we use zero for, for additive identity. We use one for multiplicative identity. Again, identity, shh, you guys aren't paying attention. The identity means it stays the same. So what would the multiplicative identity be for a matrix? So, well, but we need a, we need a matrix though, all right? So what if I took this matrix... This is not determinant. We're not doing determinants. This is just a regular old matrix. What do I need to multiply it by in order to keep it exactly the same? Would it? All right. So. So this needs to be a one somehow, right? But what's a one as a matrix? I'm not going to go through. And do any explanations, I'm just going to show it to you. All right? Here's the identity 
it's 1, 0, and 0, 1. Because if you look at it, do you remember how we multiply? We multiply this way and this way. Remember that? And then you go this and this. Yeah? And then you go this one and this one. Yeah? And then you go this one and this one. All right? Once you do all that stuff, I'm not going to do it just because of time right now. I have it in my notes. I wrote it all down. But once you do all that stuff, then you're going to end up with the same exact thing. So this is considered your identity matrix. All right, so that's going to come in handy for what we're going to do here in a minute. That was fairly easy. <laughs> Wait till you see this one, okay? I don't want to scare you or anything, but this one's a little bit more involved. So I, I want you to stay awake. I don't want you to take. I want you to take good notes. Write this down, all right, so that it's it's on there. Um, so when I talk about the multiplicative inverse, so for instance, watch. If I had three x equals twelve, okay? Everybody knows what you should do to get x by itself. What would that be? Divide by three. But let's do multiplication. What would I multiply this by? in order to get rid of the three. Oh, negative three. Sorry. Zero? It would get rid of everything. It would get rid of your x. You only want to get rid of the three. Everybody knows to divide by three. I want to multiply. Everybody knows you... It's not negative reciprocal. Why negative reciprocal? Just the reciprocal. So look, we're going to multiply. It's called multiplicative inverse. Inverse means reciprocal, right? Flip the fraction. So you're going to multiply by the inverse of it. So what do you do over here? You multiply by 1 over 3, yes? Isn't that the same thing as dividing? So we don't really divide matrices. What we do is we multiply it by its what? I just said the word. Reciprocal. Very good, okay? So in matrices, we don't really divide. We multiply by the reciprocal in order to get rid of something. All right, and there are going to be times where we're going to have to solve for x and y. It's going to be a little bit complicated. Um, yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to finish this today, but I just want you to know what the inverse is. So I think I'm just going to... I'm just going to show you what it is. Okay, I'm not going to try to give you any explanation. I think they do in the book. And it gets really lengthy and really complicated, but I'm just going to show you how to do the inverse. Now, again, what is the what is the multiplicative inverse of three? I'll put an arrow. They're not equal to each other. Okay, they're not equal. Okay, but what's a multiplicative inverse of three? Just did it. It's one third. What's the multiplicative inverse of two over three? It's three over two. Okay, we're not changing the sign of it. We just keep the sign the same. What if I had this, negative 5 sevenths? What's the multiplicative inverse of negative 5 over 7? Negative 7 over 5. Negative 7 over 5. Everybody got that? Those are just regular numbers that we've dealt with for years and years. All right, I hope all this foolishness helps you learn this stuff. Somehow I don't think it is. All right, here's, I'm just going to show it to you. All right, here's how you find the multiplicative inverse of a matrix. Okay, why would you use that? Why would you want a multiplicative inverse of a matrix? So you could divide, all right? If you wanted to divide by a matrix, then you would take you would multiply by the inverse or the reciprocal. It's not really reciprocal. We'll call it inverse. Multiply by the inverse of the matrix. So here it is. Do you see that to the negative one power? You've seen that before, haven't you? Right? To the negative first. So watch. What's three to the negative first? What do you do when you have a negative exponent? flip it to the bottom, and change the sign of the exponent. So what would that be? It would be 1 third. Would you agree? So 3 to the negative first is the same as 1 third. So what I'm showing right here, this right here means the inverse of matrix A. Everybody got it? So here's what we, and matrix A would be, it's just a 2 by 2, like matrix A. I didn't write this down in my notes. I should have. It's like A, A, and B and B, this would be one and two, this would be one and two. So if that's my matrix, I wanna find the inverse of that matrix. You got it? 
the multiplicative inverse of that matrix. Here it is. Again, with no real explanation on why it, it is what it is. They do it in the book. It's a little lengthy. I really don't think you're going to care. All right. I think you just want to be able to find the inverse of it. So here's what we do. First of all, we go one over the matrix. That makes sense, right? Actually, it's one over the determinant of the matrix. Sorry. So, but that's, we're not done though. So A, B. So we just write the matrix, but we put it as a determinant. We put one over, but we're not done. That's only a part of it. And then we're going to take that, and that's just a number, because when you take the determinant of something, you just get a number, right? You work it out, right? Do that cross-multiply thing, subtract, and you just get a number. And that number is being multiplied by not the original matrix, but we're going to flip some stuff around. So watch what we're going to do. The A1 and the B2, you see those? They're just going to switch places. Okay, so let's do that. What's this going to be up top now? B2. B2. What's going to be on the bottom right? A1. A1. All right. A1. So that's what we do. And now with these two, shh, stop with the comments. Nobody cares about your silly comments. Okay. Let's pay attention <laughs> to this. With these two right here, what we're going to do is just change the sign. We're not going to flip them. We're just going to change the sign of them. So if this was B1, what do we do to it? change the sign. So put a negative in front of it. Okay. What was this one down the bottom left? It was a two. And now what do we do to it? Okay. We change the sign of it. So there's a lot of stuff to remember, but that's what you got to do. This right here is the inverse, the multiplicative inverse, or just the inverse matrix. Okay. We just call it the inverse matrix. We don't really call it the multiplicative inverse. This is just the inverse of this, okay? So if you wanted to, if you wanted to multiply this, right? You can multiply that by another matrix. What if you wanted to take this and divide it by another matrix? Well, you would actually multiply by the inverse of that matrix, okay? So you have to do all this, and then you could multiply by the other matrix, okay? If I wanted to, we definitely don't have time, but if you wanted to, you could do some math on this and then take that, multiply it by that. It'd be very ugly. But what would happen? What if you take a number and multiply it by its inverse? What does it always become? One. A one. So one. this would become an identity matrix. So if I took this and multiplied it by this, we would get an identity matrix, which is what? one zero zero one okay we're not going to do it it's a little bit it's very tedious okay i didn't even do it in my notes all right but that's what would happen if you did it okay so now let's just i think we have time just to find the inverse of a matrix and then tomorrow we can um actually use it and solve an equation all right with this you know how you had those two variable equations right, and you did substitution elimination, you could actually use um, this matrices stuff to be able to solve those. But we're not going to do that today. We don't have enough time today. So let's try to finish this up real quick. This is example three. And it says find the inverse matrix of, so find A to the negative first. And here's what A is. They tell you what the matrix is. It's only a two by two, so it makes it kind of easy. Two negative three, four, four. Okay, so how do we find the inverse of it? Well, what's the first thing we do? We go one over the what? The determinant of this, all right? And so you just put two, negative three, four, four, times, and now you gotta do some switcheroos here. What do you do? The two and the four, so that's gonna be four, and this is gonna be two, and then you change the sign of these two right here. So that's going to be a positive three. That's going to be a negative four. You with me? Yeah. yeah, easy. And now you just do the work, all right? Figure out what this number is. Then it just becomes a regular number. It becomes a scalar, right? And then you just multiply that number by each one of the elements inside of here. And then you've got it. So, well, now you're not dividing anything. 
what do you do? You got to find the determinant. How do we find the determinant? So this is going to be one over, what's that? Eight, can we, let's do it off to the side. This is going to be eight minus what? No, nope. eight minus negative 12, which would be what? 20, positive 20, okay? And now we take that one over 20 and we multiply it by everything in this matrix. Once we do that, then we have an inverse matrix. So four over 20, what's that? Can you do four over 20 in your head? Reduce the fraction? One over five, okay? What's three over 20? Well, it's just three over 20, you can't reduce that. What's this gonna be? Negative four over 20, so it's gonna be what? Negative one fifth, and this is two over 20, which is gonna be one tenth. Look at that, right on time. And that is the what? It's the inverse matrix. So now you know how to find the inverse matrix. All right. We're going to actually use it tomorrow. We're going to solve for X and Y. All right. And, um, and then you'll see. Sometimes it's easier to use these things. Sometimes it's not. But that's what we're going to learn tomorrow.